Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with round 19 of our F123 My Team career mode. Yes, we're back this weekend. Formula 1 has returned to Austin, Texas for what is now the Texas Grand Prix rather than the US Grand Prix. I don't quite know uh, what the rules are anymore, but we're actually back with our second sprint weekend in a row. Of course, if you missed out yesterday's video where we went out to the all new in the F1 games, La Salle Circuit. Would highly recommend going back and checking out. It was a very, very fun weekend from the all-new Qatar Grand Prix. Had a lot of fun with it. And yeah, I think you guys, like I said, if you missed it, go back, check it out, go watch it. Um, but yeah, of course, as well, before we dive into this one, a massive thank you to all of you uh, for the continued support. At the time of recording this, 109,000. That's been ticked off the list. We are less than a 1,000 away now uh, from 110k. So it would be greatly, greatly appreciated if you could help me get one step closer. Daily My Team videos until we win win that world championship and yeah we're, we're still a little way off that as we come towards the end of season one of course rule changes have been announced for season two uh, i'm working on uh, to be honest at the moment i'm just saving up the r d ready to make those upgrades you can see quite a big shift actually uh, in performance at the moment though alpine seem to have dropped back williams and As uh sorry has even making some big big gains there you can see now up to fourth and fifth best as we head into this weekend so that's quite a big surprise prize uh but championship wise though we're still hanging on to seventh at the moment in the constructors 23 points they're five now ahead of Haas, who are clearly trying to make a bit of a late race charge of it uh we're, we're still 12th in the driver's championship though seven points ahead of nico hulkenberg still uh, so you've got to be very very careful there but really all eyes are on the battle now at the top of the table three points between ferrari and red bull um in the constructors three points between Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen as well. So it is all still to play for here with five races to go of the campaign. Five races, two sprint weekends. There's a lot going on still before the end of season one and I am so excited to jump into it. I don't think we've seen this much rain at Kota since the 2015 Grand Prix. We haven't had many really wet weekends so far this year. And to be honest, it doesn't look like it's going to continue. Um, if the data the team have provided me is anything to go by, it should only be raining during free practice here. So I haven't got too much to worry about in that regard. But yeah, I'm intrigued to see, again, how a sprint weekend will work at Kota. I think it will bring a lot of extra interest uh, to Austin as well. Of course, you know, you wonder... Whether they might be a little bit put out, of course, at Cosa, you know, Miami and Las Vegas now both also getting a Grand Prix. Will this track in the future kind of get left behind? Only time will tell. Uh, but I hope not. I do quite like the Cota circuit still. And I feel like it's a good place for Formula 1 to go to. I've always said what they actually need to do um, is do, like, a ridiculous weekend where IndyCar, NASCAR and Formula 1 all race around the Cota venue there. Just do, like, a super weekend or something is... One tiny lock up of the front wheels there, and you can see uh, the tyre wear run drops to the floor. We're making our way through the final couple of corners. It's a shame if that been for that lock up. We could have probably got a very, very good score here, but the delta time is good. Gonna be a pearl, uh, sorry, a green even to kick off the weekend. Right, ERS program up next, and I'm hoping this one's gonna be really easy because you don't really want to use the battery in the wet anyway all too much. So this is now effectively just a time trial lap. Um, with maybe a little bit of battery down the back straight. Well, often inside F1, the wet practice sessions can either deliver some very easy or some very difficult program times, but so far this weekend, again, another second up on the ERS as we round our way through the final corner. That one, even easier than the tyre wear sim run. All we've got left to do then is the race sim run, but this is easy points at the moment. Clearly, the track is slowly clearing up there. We can see much less water falling down and we're now out onto a set of intermediate tyres so how's that going to affect the deltas and the practice programs only time will tell shame we're not going to get any dry running before qualifying but i guess we'll just have to try and take it easy early on and build up confidence i've often felt like my pace around texas has been quite good but practically three seconds up then on the target delta looks like it is moving around slightly uh, to try and become more competitive for us but yeah this might be 
Another easy locked in purple. There's more cars now heading out onto the track, though. Just as I think we're about 10 minutes away from the rain apparently stopping. And in the final corner, then, this might be the easiest free practice session I've had inside F123 up to now. See, we go P3. They're only seven tenths away from Sergio Perez. But, yeah, purple scores, then. Love that. Let's get into qualifying. I'll be honest then, there has been a little bit of guesswork trying to see how much wing we need to run and things like that ready for qualifying, but hopefully I've got the setup all nicely dialed in. Kota again is one of those tracks where when you get it hooked up, it is so, so satisfying. It's a fast flowing circuit, 20 corners, 10 to the left, 10 to the right. We've got to try and get a good benchmark on the board. So that is optimistic on the brakes at one. Well, we'll round off the exit nicely, I suppose I'm going to word that. I'll be honest, I didn't really used to like the Kota circuit all too much, but I feel like the last couple of F1 games, they've just made some subtle tweaks to this place, and it now does feel a lot more fun to race around. But anyway, rounding our way, we the final couple of corners then to finish off my banker lap. Love this section. This triple and quadruple apex right. And then you flick it through these final two lefts to finish off the lap. They just about hang it on the curbing. One more corner to go. Make sure you attack the curbs on the inside. Out of the final corner, up towards the line. 34-8. Quicker than Oscar Piastri. I mean, we were slow on the Yuki Tsunoda still, so I think we're about where we would expect. Starting my last run then here in Q1. There's about a six-tenth gap between Tsunoda and the cars in front. So we're really going to have to try and find a bag of time we want to make any improvements here and you can see immediately three tenths at turn one alone so that first corner was definitely not the wrong line first time around there smash it through the s's down to the sixth gear so you get towards the end of sector one and then you're still trying to lean it through there try and gather it up keep it clean and tidy as we make our way up the hill we'll compromise a bit of time on the entry but we'll make it all back up off the exit of the corner there as we plunge down the hill Breaking at the 100 meter board for the hairpin. Just about trying to attack as much curb as we can. Avoid the wheel spin though on the exit of the corner there. Fairly tidy on the throttle. You can see we clearly last time round were able to maintain a lot of momentum as we made our way through the S bends there. Logan Sargent under the P19. Breaking just at the 150 meter board as we try to avoid that inside curbing all too much. And again, Keep it clean and tidy as we make our way through this technical final sector. Got to be so, so balanced on the throttle. But we are finding time. We are building confidence here as we make our way into just the final couple of corners then of my Q1 lap. Seven tenths up at the moment. This is not over just yet. We have made big, big gains as this lap has gone on. We need to be brave. We need to be tidy though. And oh, we just bottomed out slightly over the entry curve. There one more corner to go. Will we be into Q2? Once again this season, I don't think we will. It's P17 in the end. We were so, so close, but that little mistake made the difference. Well, there we go then, having a look at our Q1 results. And Red Bull finally starting to pull their finger out once more. They're quicker than both Ferrari cars. And that's a long time since we last said that early on in qualifying there. P17, four hundredths away from Nico Hulkenberg at the end of Q1. That one does sting a little. I won't lie there. Four thousandths of a second between Alvin Stroll and Joe Guan Yu as well. But we got time in the sprint race to try and make some progress. And we're pretty close. I mean, you look up Pierre Gasly. Only four tenths quicker than myself. We are not out of this fight just yet. We need to get a good sprint race. Welcome to today's sprint. This is shaping up to be another fantastic weekend. of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's sprint. What a qualifying yesterday for George Russell. He'll start today's race from pole position with Charles Leclerc alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Hamilton, Verstappen, 
Perez, Norris, Fernando Alonso, Bottas, Gasly, Magnussen, Stroll, Ocon, Albon, Joe, Hulkenberg, Mr. Monaco, Sonoda, Sargent, Oscar Piastri, De Vries, and the reserve driver rounds off the grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head trackside for today's sprint. OK, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. Right, well, here we are then, ready on the grid for Saturday's sprint racing action here from the US Grand Prix at Cota, Austin, Texas. Been on the calendar, of course, now for the... Well, oh yeah, over a decade now, hasn't it? That's crazy to think about. Uh, now I think about it, I'm getting really, really old. But a 10-lap sprint, just like we had last weekend now in Qatar. These videos are getting incredibly long uh, from all these sprint races. But you know what? I hope you guys are enjoying it nonetheless. We need to try and make up some places here. Got to try and be aggressive because we want to put ourselves in a good position ready for the main event. Well, I might have given Red Bull some praise early on in qualifying for toppling Ferrari, but it didn't seem to last very long there. Max Verstappen lining up P5 on the grid. Charles Leclerc on the front row once again here. Is it all just going away from the Dutchman as he looks to crown himself a three-time Formula 1 world champion? Anyway, up towards the line then. Make sure we get the car slowed down nice and tidy. There we go. Ready on the grid for the US GP Sprint Race. 10 laps ahead of us today, 28 laps ahead of us tomorrow. Things are about to get spicy. Five red lights. Lights out and away we go. Just trying to maintain the throttle. There is Ocon. Clearly getting off to quite a bad start as we head up towards Sermon. We've got Yuki Sonoda. Oh, I'm trying to have a look up the inside of myself. It's down the inside of as many cars as we sensibly can go there. A number to P13 immediately then off the start of the USGP, so you have to, have to send it in a little bit. You know, it is Sprint Race Saturday. We've got to try and make up some gains early on there, and to be honest, I'm still very, very nervous about those Haas cars as well, potentially getting a couple of very good point tools uh, before the end of the year. I mean, Bottas there running up in P8 again. Maybe we've got to start worrying about Alfa Romeo as well. Of course, Williams and Alfa Romeo scoring big, big points last weekend. We could still very easily, if things went badly, finish this championship down in ninth or 10th in the Constructors and that would have huge ramifications on the budget there as Lance Stroll struggling to put the power down as we head out onto the back straight for the first time. The Canadian has had a really rough season in that very competitive Aston Martin car there. We're going to try and get down the inside of him. Oh, Bottas and Lando Norris almost coming to blows further up the road. We will just squeeze Sir Lance out there. So five places gained on the opening lap here in Sprint Race Saturday. Pretty decent start especially by my standards. Of course, we've got to work out what a decent start is now on F123. I always used to say F as long as I didn't lose a place on the previous F1 games, but it's a new game. It's a new generation. We have all new hope as well, of course, but rounding our way through the final couple of corners, then Russell leads still at the end of lap one. Charles Leclerc still in hot pursuit there as both Red Bulls seem to have got the jump on Carlos Sainz. I know I keep going on about it, but I'd love to potentially get Alex Albon into the team ready for Season 2. I feel like he'd be a fantastic driver, absolutely wringing the neck out of that Williams every single weekend this year. Um, yeah, we'd love to have him alongside us. I don't think I've ever had Albon as a teammate before in the previous F1 games. But, yeah, still I'm an hour and about, obviously, who we're going to put in the roster, uh, you know, up for debate for Season 2. Uh, you know, for those of you that are new to the channel and don't quite know how the driver polls work, I basically, you know, get yourself subbed, uh, turn the notification bell on, and I just put up community tab posts here on YouTube uh, for you all to go have your say on. So, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd leave it up to you guys. Sometimes you screw me, you pick Charles Leclerc, who ends up being an absolutely dominant force inside F122. Other times, we just get some decent little battles with our championship as well there. But, yeah, it's up to you. Uh, but I will, I, I narrow it down. You guys tell me then who we go with. Is trying to get a run on Albon we head down the back straight not quite close enough this time we'd love to get into the top 10 by the end of this sprint then even closer to Albon this time round. a bit annoyed to be honest that seems like we've inherited the Cota qualifying weather from last year I mean I guess it makes sense of course at the same time as Albon oh, trying to get his elbows out with me I did wonder then for a second whether we'd be left any room on the outside but 
please can the glare be sorted around this venue? It's so annoying. Like, ever. Whenever I go for a move on Alex Alvin in this series, all the AI then directly in front of him suddenly just decide they know how to race again. We get the jump on Alvin, we do lose a little bit of time battling with each other, and then suddenly, Valtteri Bottas, Lando Norris, and Pierre Gasly there romping away from me. Here goes Alvin back down the inside. Again, he's going to try and force me out there. Love the fact those sausage curbs have been removed on the exit. But yeah, we're just now letting Gasly and Norris get away. Yeah, it really does seem now, unfortunately for us, unless Lando and Bottas start battling a bit more late on in the day. And it looks like Lando Norris is trying to apply more pressure to Valtteri Bottas. All our focus is going to be on our mirrors there, as Albert and I still trying to duke it out for 11th place. I mean, Lance Stroll just waiting in the wings. Why is that Aston Martin in 12th still? Answer me that. And don't just say because it's Lance Stroll. The yellow's out. Someone's got issues. Oh, Carlos Sainz out of the sprint race here so that might have some big ramifications then for ferrari in the constructors championship red bull and look at that charles leclerc now behind both red bulls as well so something going catastrophically wrong for ferrari early on this weekend and don't say after we've finally started hyping them up finally starting to believe that ferrari might be able to do something this season maybe kota turning into a bit of a nightmare as lando norris down the inside of valtteri bottas can't they just go side by side a bit more and let Gazzy and I, well Gaz is there, but let me close in. I'm getting a little bit worried about the gearbox late on in this sprint race. I'm trying to avoid taking gearbox penalties as best as possible late on this season. Especially if we could start the main event from inside the top 10 here, but I don't know. It's I don't know why. I mean, we've gone, we've gone completely through five gearboxes this season. It's likely to be six by the end of the campaign. That seems like a lot in modern Formula 1. Right, Here goes Gasly though to the outside of Valtteri Bottas in towards Turn 1. So maybe if they can start battling, we can try and get a late race hope of some more potential here. As, come on Bottas, keep the nose up the inside there. So they make their way in towards the S. You know what, Bottas isn't backing out of it. Here Gasly there forced to submit P8 still. And yeah, Bottas wants another point. Our final lap then of sprint race Saturday here and Bottas still trying to hang on from Pierre Gasly. Are we going to see the Frenchman go for a dive? No, not quite down at turn one. I think he's just trying to sit back and save the opportunity so that Bottas has got no chance at coming back at him here. And poor Valtteri Bottas, I mean, he's still in eight for now. He might be able to hang on. Alfa Romeo really do seem to have finally found something in that car after what has been a pretty desperate year for them. I'm sure, yeah, Bottas would love that as well, of course, just to build up that buffer slightly over Williams once again. Both tied on nine points. Both now have got the jump on Alpha Tauri, who are all the way down on just two. So, yeah, it really has been a bit of a disastrous year for Sonoda as well. Here goes Alvin up the inside of myself, then down in the hairpin. A cheeky little dive bomb there from the Williams. You know what? He's done that perfectly, because not only has he made the move work, he's also going to get the DRS in the process, completely drain the battery. As we head down the back straight there, Bottas and Gasly still going side by side further up the road. And we can't be brave enough on the brakes there trying to look back down the inside of Alex Albon. So final lap of this sprint race. And he has absolutely mugged me off there. So we try and make our way through the final couple of corners. It is going to be a Mercedes 1-2 on Saturday. George Russell took the lead, never looked back. It's been a fantastic day for him. Hamilton will come through for P2. Red Bull after so many weeks of questioning, are finally going to prove they've still got what it takes to beat Ferrari there. Don't know which one came through for P3. Charles Leclerc in fifth ahead of Alonso. Round in the final corner, though, 17th to 11th. We really can't complain. All right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. review the updated driver standings. Despite the best efforts of our championship leader, that lead has taken a bit of a knock today. With the sprint wrapped up, we now have our grid lineup for the big race tomorrow. Be sure to join us then for what will no doubt be a fantastic race. Well, there we are then, the end of sprint race Saturday here from Cota, and it is George Russell that takes the win, eight tenths clear 
of his teammate Lewis Hamilton there. Verstappen in P3 ahead of Sergio Perez. Charles Leclerc down in fifth. So I don't know whether he has to try and manage an issue or something like that. But that really helps Red Bull out and allows him to open up a bit of a championship lead once again over their big, big rivals there. Championship-wise, Leclerc now one point between him and Max Verstappen at the top of the table. So that could very easily swap over again come the end of this weekend there. Perez, 11 points ahead of... Car sorry, no, yeah, there's 11 points sorry, ahead of Carlos Sainz. That means, constructors-wise, 10 points the difference between Red Bull and Ferrari here. We have got an absolute barnstormer of an end to this season. You can see Bottas must be so gutted with losing out that place because Williams still sat in P9 overall in the championship. That's going to do us, though, for the sprint race. We've got 28 more laps of Kota coming up, so let's get on with it. Here we are then in one of the fastest growing cities in the United States, the fabulous Austin in the great state of Texas. The circuit itself, 14 miles southeast of the city center, has been home to the US Grand Prix since 2012, the latest in a long list of iconic tracks to have that honor. We're racing then today in Travis County, Texas, around the 20 corners of this wonderful circuit of the Americas. We'll be reaching speeds of around 200 miles per hour here today, and there are plenty of good opportunities to pass, especially through the two DRS zones into turn one and the long back straight into turn 12. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. George Russell will begin today's event in pole position, and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Perez, Leclerc, Fernando Alonso, Hamilton, Gasly, Bottas, Albon, Mr. Monaco, Stroll, Norris, Hulkenberg, Magnussen, Sonoda, Ocon, Sargent, De Vries, the reserve driver, Joe, Oscar Piastri, Joe. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. And with me today, of course, is Natalie Pinkham. Let's talk about Mr. Monaco. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within the team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that has definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. Well, nice to hear some positive there from Natalie Pinkham. But we're ready for the US Grand Prix. And I think, to be honest, I'm not convinced that the soft medium is going to be a doable strategy here. We struggled with tyre wear enough in the sprint race, only doing 10 laps on a set of mediums. So the idea of doing 12 laps on a set of softer tyres, I don't fancy my chances with. Would appear everyone around me does fancy their chances, though, as grid penalties galore as we head into the US Grand Prix today. We haven't taken any penalties, so I'm running quite the gamble. Alban Bottas and myself all starting here inside the top 10. I'm sure we want to probably try and work together to try and see if we can snoop our way some points, but it's a fine balance between working together to try and get us all points, or we kind of throw them under the bus and claim the free places as well. Uh, there is no such thing as fairness in the world of Formula One. But lining up then on the grid, ready for the US Grand Prix. There's some fast charges right towards the rear of the field as well. But Stroll and Norris right behind us. They've been perennial top 10 finishers throughout most of this season. So can we try to keep them at bay here today? Five red lights then on the grid, ready for the US Grand Prix. Lights out and away we go. Or not away we go for the likes of Bottas there who spots me trying to have a look past him. Lance Stroll will say thank you very much as we've gone past Alban as well and just trying to find any room we possibly can down at Turn 1, but we've made it work around the outside of Hamilton and Lance Stroll there. So straight up then into P7 of the US Grand Prix, and a bit like what we did last weekend in Qatar. Just tried to find the space somewhere at the first corner, and it has really worked out for me there. Clearly, we're getting lightning starts inside F123 there as Sir Lance again of course spent a lot of yesterday I, I did have a, bit of, a little bit of oversteer there but I wondered whether that was going to be okay, contact with the Canadian yes we were probably going to get a few messages about mechanical wear over the course of the afternoon yellow flags out 
on this opening lap. That must have been someone behind me. No, it must have just been the Constantina running up then. But yeah, pretty much the dream start we could have wanted here at Cota as George Russell still leads the way. Looking for a flawless weekend here in the USA. Um, looks like Red Bull still hanging on to P2 there. Max Verstappen ahead of Charles Leclerc. And of course, yeah, one point between those two at this stage of the championship. It is crazy how good that title fight is really coming out at the moment. But it is all still to play for, like we said, late on in the season. But as we round our way through the final couple of corners then to finish off lap one. Seventh place, of course, I've finished here a couple of times so far this season. Um, but yeah, we are going to have to spend a lot of this afternoon focusing on our mirrors. And here goes that stroll then, already up the inside of me as we get down the bottom of the hill. Parks it on the apex, gives me nowhere to go off the corner. And you can see just how quickly that Aston Martin leaps off the corner. Yeah, tire wear, though, I think is going to be interesting for the AI today. We really have got to hope uh, that the circuit is as abrasive as it was on Saturday evening. It's back down the inside of Lance. will go, not going to make his life too easy. He's going to switch me, though, again off the corner. That Aston Martin got a lot more grip, of course, on those softer tyres. But you know what? They're still going to get the elbows out with the Canadian. And we hang on for now. How much of today is just going to be about trying to hang on? And now, this is going to be the proper test, then, on just lap three. DRS now, of course, being enabled in this GP. I mean, top six are gone. Uh, they're pretty much, unless something goes catastrophically for them, they're probably pretty much locked in already this afternoon. So Pierre Gasly, I'm sure, can thank me after the race, can buy me a drink or something like that. But, yeah, we're using a lot of battery early on, just trying to keep Lance at bay. But if our day couldn't get any more difficult, then Hamilton now found his way around Lance Stroll early on here on just lap four. Uh, so rather than defending from, you know, like a five-time podium sitter. Uh, we're, we're now defending from a seven-time world champion uh, and Lewis Hamilton in a very, very quick Mercedes around one of his best tracks as... Well, almost then. We, we weren't going to defend for very long there. Hamilton... Uh, what? Bro! <laughs> Have some chill. Come on. I'm in my little 212 motorsport car. I'm trying to do my best. And Lewis Hamilton having none of it then. So, I mean, he's probably not even going to do me the generosity of offering to drag me along as well. I think he's probably going to break free uh, pretty quickly there, but Hamilton in no time for messing around apparently. No! Alex Albon apparently has got issues already in his Williams. He's got yellow flags out. Don't say that is the Williams. Yep. I think that's the Williams. Pretty much has given up immediately then, so Mark's hunch was correct. Albon, I think I don't think he's out of the race, but he is now in last place. I, I like Alex Albon on this game. I want him to do well. Yellow flags out. Lance Stroll behind us. Now seems to be pulling over. So nightmare. But Lance Stroll. And we've got a safety car. Could that change up the strategy this afternoon? I'm not convinced it will. I think we've just got to stay with the plan we had. Could we go hard from here? I mean, Aaron Barnes has peeled into the pit lane. Is it worth boxing? Can we take hard 20 laps to the end? I think we've got to gamble it, surely. I don't want to lose out on a free stop. Even if we have to pit late on in the day. Right, well, it looks like basically every other car into the pit okay, lane then down, at the end of lap eight. So I think this is going to have to be the strategy to go with. Get on those hard tyres and try and take him through to the end of the afternoon there. Perez doing the same thing. I think, yeah, pretty much everyone then. That's, that's good then. Nice to know that we're thinking in a similar fashion to most of the other teams. So it's just a question, yeah, whether we can all get these tyres to the end of the GP. Um, I would say kind of... What? No! I had it set up with hards. What is that? EA! No! Well, apparently now I'm two stopping then. I, I can't afford to pit again under this safety car. What is that? It was set to hard tyres. I had a new set ready to go. Oh, Fernando. I was literally about to hype up the fact that he's only got a few races left of his Formula 1 career. And I was going to lead the way here at Cota, but yeah, Fernando Alonso then peeling into the pit lane. So we're going to have to try and get this set of soft tyres to the end of about 19 and then go on another fresh set of softs to the end. So good job. Um, yeah, we've got no fresh set to medium still for the rest of the weekend, so it's a good job we've got so many sets of softs, otherwise we would be completely screwed. Don't like the look of our engine either. I guess all we can really do now then is try and be as aggressive as possible off this restart. Try and make up places 
and pray that we've got the pace late on in the afternoon to try and get the car back inside the top 10 there. I cannot believe. Again, it looks like another strategy or unlucky safety car is going to completely screw me over. I just want a clean weekend again inside F123. Ever since Singapore, it's been one problem after another. It's all Hamilton there. A lot of Constantine running up through the final corner, but we are going to be green flag racing once again then. And of course, Hamilton was very, very aggressive when he tried to get past me. I don't think I'm going to get much say again on the run back down towards Turn 1. You know what? We are going to look. Oh, Hamilton. He didn't want to give me the room and then kind of felt like he had to at the very last moment. But we have got the grip off the corner as we head down the hill there side by side with a Merc. No, we're not. Hamilton again will swoop back through and let's just try and hang with him and build up the gap to Norris behind. Say that now. We are actually getting a bit of a run on Lewis down the back straight. Down the inside we'll go. Oh, so close to locking up the fronts there, but we've overtaken him. We have overtaken a Mercedes, and Mark loving that. We've lost one of the gears. The transmission is significantly no. damaged. We're down a gear, I'm afraid. Which gear? Have, oh, we've lost fourth gear. That is quite a handy one, our aim coater. So now we're going to have to really try and drive around that as well, then. Oh, that is so annoying. If it had been third or fifth, it might have been a bit better. But fourth gear is so good for the traction around this venue. This is just, again, feels like another weekend where we're having disaster. Um, I don't know then whether there's any chance we could try and get the gear back later on in the day. Uh, but yeah, we are really driving ourselves potentially into a mechanical failure here. So annoying. You just get off the onto the throttle, off the hairpin, get it up into fourth gear, and of course it goes straight to fifth, and then you feel like you've got nothing in terms of straight line speed there. We still know we've got a lot top end, but having to be even more careful than normal. Luckily, my driving style doesn't rely on the engine brake too much, uh, but it, it is still not great. Oh, okay. There we go then. Looks like we've got fourth gear back again, which is rather nice. So, yeah, that apparently hasn't changed then from previous F1 games. You lose the gear for a couple of laps and then you can get it back. Um, but... Can't we just lose, like, first or something instead? That would be that would be nice. Or, I say nice, less bad, as that is a horrible line up through the end of the S's, despite the fact we've got all the gears again. And now I've lost the DRS. Hamilton again. Can I have a look to the inside? We've still got a lot of grip on these tyres. This is getting scrappy, though, between myself and Lewis, and the last thing we want is the likes of Yuki Tsunoda getting a sniff, getting an opportunity that they can get back into the DRS site. Seems like he's done very well to get himself back up the roster. As here goes Hamilton then. Up the inside. Gasly and um, Perez side by side in front. Oh, Lewis just completely came across me nose there. This is getting very, very scrappy. More contact to myself on the mark. But you know what? Our car's falling apart anyway. We may as well fight it. Bozow seems to be... Is that our teammate? Are we going to have our first mechanical failure of the year? I can't remember. I don't think Fittipaldi's had one in the first half of the year. And yeah, I think Aaron Bottoms is pulling over to the wayside then. And there's only one way we can sum up my feelings towards that. Oh, no. Anyway, uh, yeah, Hamilton flying past us. Lando Norris trying to get a look in as well. As now we can see Yuki Tsunoda about three seconds back by the time we get down to the end of the back straight. So ideally, by the time I pit, I'm on that gap up towards the five, six second mark because we are going to have to push like crazy again if the car makes it to the end. But mechanical failure for Aaron Barnes does not bode well for us. Let's start on lap 17. Oh, we've got yellow flags. Hamilton. I think Hamilton now has got issues, and we've got a safety car again. That one works out nicely for me. Verstappen seems to have span again. I've got an illegal overtake on Lando Norris. Come on, get on with it. I didn't realise he was ahead of me at any point. But Verstappen has caused two safety cars in two weekends from spinning around by himself there. So no idea what's happened to the Dutchman, but I can't believe he's done that again. And Charles Leclerc now must be absolutely rubbing his hands together at the opportunity that has befallen him. That's fine. That's fine. Let's have a look what he's saying. Um, so but he keeps just saying speak. I don't know why it keeps telling me to speak, because I don't want to. I don't know what it's listened to. Um, but anyway, yeah, fresh set of softs then going back on the wagon at the end of this lap. We are going to be right towards the rear of the field, but two safety cars here at Kota 
This race has just been full of drama. Well, I'm going to try and be incredibly cheeky as we head into the pit lane then. As it looks like the front runners are a bit split on strategy. Charles Leclerc into the pit lane. George Russell trying to stay out there. I don't think Lando Norris was ahead of me before we were heading out. Oh, he's, he's stayed out anyway, so it makes no difference. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty certain Lando jumped me under the safety car as well. But into the pits will come then at the end of lap 17. Ten laps to go of this race, so it's still not going to be easy on a fresh set of the soft compound tyres. Leclerc's gone to another set of hearts, so that doesn't fill me with confidence, but where are we going to re-emerge then in this race? We're going to be P13, but there is going to be some easy pickings. Oh, Charles Leclerc down in 9th place, Max Verstappen down in 15th place, Carlos Sainz in 14th place. Has Sergio Perez here got a potential opportunity to give himself an outside shot of the World Championship? once again we've been driving under the safety car like i have to pay for the tires myself to try and give ourselves as much usable life as we can in the final nine laps here george russell has led this race right from the get-go and i'm sure does not want to relinquish that lead with just a handful of laps to go but we're on softs a lot of cars i think every other car on the field is on hards just a few of them are on a fresh set out of the final corner it is going to be green flag racing once again then and we need to try and immediately go on the offensive then on Lance Stroll. The Aston Martin will be quick, but we should be quicker there as down the inside you'll go. Let's see how much confidence we've got on the brakes immediately as look at that. Nick DeFries, Logan Sargent, they're both running up inside the top 10 as well, well, around the top 10 as well at the moment. Sargent, I'm sure he'd love to score his first points in front of a home crowd, but in the nicest way possible, Logan. I'm going to try and stop you there. As you can see, Charles Lefer already trying to apply pressure to Esteban Ocon a little bit further up the road, but I've got so much more grip than Nick De Vries. I need to be able to utilise it. We're going to have to send it down to the hairpin. As Charles Leclerc thinks about doing the same thing a little bit further afield. Down the inside will go. That's another place game then. And now we are right outside the top ten once more. Here goes Logan Sargent. He sees we're a threat. He's going to try and go defensive on me. We'll peel to the outside. Straight line speed this weekend has been pretty competitive despite the engine wear. Down the outside will go. Sergeant going to try and hang on, but we'll just squeeze him. And we will be through and back up then inside the top 10 of the US Grand Prix. I'm scared. I'm scared after what happened to Zandvoort to go for a move on Charles. Through the final couple of corners of Charles Leclerc there. Running very, very oddly through the final couple of turns. Around the outside, we'll try and go then. And we have just mugged off the Monogast driver and world championship leader, Charles Leclerc. I'm in ninth place then as we start lap 21. Surely we can get a run on knock on we head back up in towards Sermon. That one was increasingly aggressive. Can't start locking up the front. And Nico Hulkenberg just sitting his way through this middle sector. I think the AI are reluctant to try and one-stop those hard tyres anyway from when everyone peeled into the pit lane. I mean, it's been like stage racing so far this afternoon as everyone, obviously with those cautions coming out of those safety cars at the wrong time for a lot of drivers, but we've tried to make it work as best as possible. We'll slide past New Hulkenberg as we head down the back straight. AI seems to have a very competitive top end, though. Nonetheless, as Hulkenberg, you can try it, mate. It's not going to work for you. As you can see there, Gasly and Lewis Hamilton duking it out for... What's that, the podium? It is his P3. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I really don't want to get ahead of myself, but down the inside of Yuki Tsunoda, we'll get ahead of him. Is it time? Come on. Let's start believing. Go up Lando Norris then. Down the inside we'll go on our fellow Brit. We've got to be much more careful on the tyres when we go for those moves. But we've pulled it off. Into P5 we go then. Remember, my best result all year was sick at Monza. It could have been P4 had it not all gone disastrously on the final lap. But we could even potentially go one better than that here. Is it Gasly? Bit of a lockup down at the end of the back straight there. And Hamilton, a bit of a sitting duck there. And you know what? We'll say thank you very much around the outside of our fellow Brit again. We have absolutely taken ourselves off his Christmas card list this afternoon. But Gasly and Alpine on a wrecked set of hard compound tyres. Surely this is going to be easy pickings for us. But then we've just got to be so, so careful in the final few laps of this Grand Prix. You can see the grip we've got there. The Frenchman just trying to hang on in front for as long as he possibly can. Perez in hot pursuit of George Russell at the front of the field, but round in the final corner, six laps to go at the US Grand Prix. Surely now we can get a run on Pierre Gasly as we head back down towards the cell one there. He's going to try and go defensive on me, but it's a pretty pointless attempt there. Oh, a lot of front locking, though. Get the thing slowed down. Hamilton 
will try and get up the inside as well there. Can't quite make it happen. But I think for the first time this season, we are into the podium places. Six laps to go at the US Grand Prix. Come on, let's try and hang on to this. Looks like Hamilton has found his way around Pierre Gasly, but the scariest thing about this at the moment, we're closing in on Russell and Perez. I don't think we're closing in by enough. But we are still the quickest car on track as Charles Leclerc now suddenly he's up to P5. Where has Charles come from late on this afternoon trying to make moves? He could still be a threat to our podium as well. But four and a bit laps to go here. We've got three seconds over Hamilton. I'm trying to nurse these tyres round as best as possible. Everything we've learnt this year about how the tyres handle so far in F123, it is all coming into full effect today. I tell you what, we've had a, quite a fierce rivalry with Lewis Hamilton today, but now with less than three laps to go, I'm really hoping our fellow Brit can keep Charles Leclerc at bay. I am so scared, so scared every time Mark pipes up that he's going to tell us we've got an issue with the engine or something like that. But two laps to go at the US Grand Prix. Are we about to witness something special? A lap to go then here from Kota. We have just got another three miles or so to survive in at the US Grand Prix in Hamilton now. That gap has just dropped under one second. This has been the perfect storm for us. It didn't look like it would be after the first safety car. Max Verstappen after he screwed me last weekend with quite possibly the worst time safety car I've had in a Formula 1 game. This time around, it's been an absolute blessing for us. He probably couldn't have timed him much better had he wanted to, but it's not over yet. Hamilton trying to close back in again. We've squabbled so much today with the Mercedes, which is such a ridiculous thing to say when you consider the car that we've got underneath us. The gearbox is getting close to giving up completely. The ICE is hardly providing us with the performance we want either, but Hamilton robbed me at Monza of a P4. I absolutely do not want him robbing me of a podium finish here. We're going to just drain the battery as we head out onto the back straight there. Defend for all our worth and try and break the toe as best as possible. He's gaining on me though. Lewis Hamilton is getting closer and closer. We'll defend into the apex. Make it so clear to the, to the Merc that we are not going to give up on this one without a fight. George Russell was round in the final few corners of the US Grand Prix here, and it looks like Mercedes are going to be back on top, but will they be able to get both cars on the podium? Hamilton having a look again, but again, we just about have the grip, and we can slam the door shut there as we wind our way through the final couple of corners. George Russell is going to win the US Grand Prix. Sergio Perez is going to come through for P2. Hamilton is going to keep pressuring me right towards the line, but out of the final corner, it's going to be a podium. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. Yet another historic win under their belts. Well done to the whole team at Mercedes. So, Natalie, what do you think helped them deliver this result? I feel consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take the top spot. A well-earned victory for Mercedes. Let's have a look then at the driver's standings. 
Charles Leclerc, currently leading the championship standings, extends his lead even further with this result. So then, Natalie Pinkham, who would you rank as your driver of the day? Max Verstappen seemed to just effortlessly weave through the other drivers today without a care in the world. He was definitely my driver of choice. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. And pulling further ahead in the standings, it's Red Bull. It's been an absolutely wild weekend of Formula One action. I can't wait to see what's next. I am an apocalyptic dingleberry. How on earth did I lose that coming out of the final corner? I will never understand. And again, it's another race where we late race make an error there. We still come through for P5. It's still my best rot of the season. But my god, did I want to bring over trophy to the team there. George Russell takes the win here at Cota. Nine tenths clear of Sergio Perez there. Hamilton will join him up on the podium there in P3 ahead of Charles Leclerc. Will come through for fifth ahead of Lando. Yuki Tsunoda, big points for Alfa Tauri there. That's going to be interesting to see how that shaped uh, the constructors' battle going on for the wooden spoon ahead of Gasly, Hulkenberg, and Carlos Sainz there. And yeah, Max Verstappen, another disappointing weekend. P19! In the end for the Dutchman. I don't know how he lost so many places right towards the end of that one. Aaron Barnes, only driver not to make it to the flag, means Charles Leclerc now leaves the Texas Grand Prix with a 13-point lead at the top of the table. We're back ahead of Gasly, but had I got that podium, we would be back ahead of Esteban Ocon as well there. So that is well and truly heart-wrenching. Uh, further down, though, I mean, yeah, Sonoda, uh, with some well-earned points now, puts himself ahead of Oscar Piastri. And it just leaves us with Joe Guan Yu, Logan Sargent, Nick De Vries, and Aaron Barnes left to score. Constructors-wise, though, Red Bull still with a 15-point lead there over Ferrari. Mercedes, 77 points back. Is it too late for them? Probably, but you never quite know in the crazy world of Formula 1. We've further opened up the gap, though, ahead of Haas behind us to 13 points there. Williams now for Romeo, still tied on 9. Alpha Tauri now on 8. That is looking brutal towards the bottom of the constructors' standings. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure to leave a like, get yourself subscribed, and Bottle Drop 212 will return tomorrow when we head to Mexico. You guys do not want to miss that. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.